Guys, today's Browns loss sucks. There's no other way around it. So there's not going to be a lot of happiness in this show, but we do have to get through the recap because we got to learn from the losses. You got to watch the film. You got to learn from the mistakes to get better. But I want to know who's at fault for this loss. Who are you, who are you yelling at your TV the most in that final stretch there? Uh, whether it was the offense for not putting the game away by picking up a first down or the defense for putting up, allowing 47 points. Just ridiculous. Let me know in the comments section who's at fault. Support for the Browns Report is presented to you by Manscaped. All right, they are the number one product and male grooming products. They've got everything out there for you, and they've got a great deal when you check them out at manscaped.com slash chat with the promo code chat. They hook you up with 20% off and free shipping on their latest and greatest product, the uh, Lawnmower 4.0. So check them out, manscaped.com slash chat, promo code chat. Browns Chargers week five recap coming at you today. A lot to unpack in this absolute shootout of a game in LA. Chargers come out on top 47 to 42. The score is just difficult to really stab at what a true reflection of the game it was, but it was not a game for anyone that likes defense. A lot of people went over 100 yards. David and Joku. Finally, living up to that first round hype, he puts up nearly 150 yards, had a great touchdown run and a touchdown reception. And then on the Chargers side, Mike Williams. Talk about living up to first round draft hype. He was also a great player in this one here as he went for nearly 170 yards, two touchdowns, and Baker Mayfield. This was a quarterback that I was a little concerned about. Flat out, wasn't sure where he would be at, but ultimately... He's able to muster up over 300 yards and a pair of TDs. So, where are you guys standing on this Browns performance in this Chargers game? Grade it for me from A to F. This is a tough one for any teacher. I mean, really, you could go on either side, A to F. F being you blew a lead in the final minutes of the game and you scored 42 points and lost. Or you could go all the way to, I wouldn't quite go to A because you lost the football game, but still, I can maybe understand why a B plus. I'm going to stab it at a B on the dot. It's it, You got sucked up in the product of the game, which was a shootout, high-scoring kind of game, and that was that. And ultimately, the Chargers at home just had the ball last. And that, well, not last, but last with you know meaningful time and momentum. So that's where I'm at. Let me know where you guys are at. But I'll tell you what, one guy that I loved, Nick Chubb, I'm going to give him an A in this game for sure. 21 carries, 161 yards, and a touchdown. Some people were saying, is Nick Chubb the Robin to Kareem Hunt all of a sudden? I never really bought much into that. What I loved out of the Browns' uh, game plan today was just their overall approach of, hey, just because Nick Chubb's in the game doesn't mean we have to run the ball. You get, You make defenses too predictable. Chubb showcased why he is RB1 on this team. And last year when he went down and Kareem Hunt was RB1, it wasn't as pretty. The two are great complimentary backs, and let's just let it be that. But Nick Chubb, probably my player of the game in a Browns uniform. Browns today is powered by Manscaped. Finally, we have a deforestation cause all of us in society can get behind, and that is trimming the hedges, whacking the weeds down below the belt line, and it's all thanks to Manscaped and their great deal, all right? They're going to give you 20% off and free shipping, and all you got to do is go to manscaped.com slash chat and use the pro promo code chat. It is time to not let Halloween, let that be your scary costume, all right? Clean up below there. It's what the ladies like. It's what your partner wants. They've got great deals. The Lawnmower 4.0 package has tons of bells and whistles with it. It's got four interchangeable blades, rechargeable battery, and a light too, so that when you're really cutting through the heavy stuff, you see what you're trimming and you're not getting anywhere near the goods and packages. Because let's face it, God only gave us two balls. You got to take care of them. The Browns kind of did it today, but the offense was all over the place for both sides. Look at the numbers here. I mean, it was a complete shootout here in L.A. between these two offenses. This game looked way more like a Big 12 football game, frankly. It looked like Baker was back at Oklahoma when you check out the offensive numbers here. 
over 500 total yards for the Browns and the Chargers just a week 493. The Browns enter today with the number one run game in the NFL and they just added on to it really 230 yards. You saw Nick Chubb's numbers earlier. He was dynamic and Ch uh, Kareem Hunt also just a great complimentary back as well. There's a couple takeaways here. One, third down conversion. Sure, not great, four for 12, but that's not the kind of thing you look at and go, there's our reason why. That's the reason why the Browns lost. Ultimately, time of possession. You out possess, you look at the possession there, and the Chargers somehow with 13 less minutes scored five more points. You can't do it. You can't, it's inexcusable. And that's what it comes down to the defense. But Baker Mayfield had a lot of question marks entering today. Enter this week with more news coming out about the shoulder injury he suffered in that uh, week two win against the Texans. Playing with a harness on his left shoulder, partially torn labrum. I was wondering, was that a fluke last week against the Vikings or is this going to be a trend all season? It sure looks like last week was a fluke. I know some people are torn on Baker and I can understand that to a degree. But ultimately Mayfield, 300 plus yards, he did everything he had to do to win this game. If you want to say how he could have scored at the end there, when you put up 42 points, you did your job. All right, that's just a fact. I mean, if this game is 42-37, no one's mad at Baker. But at the end of the day, it does f partially fall on the quarterback no matter what. Even though you put up 42 points, there is a slight bit of you could have gotten the first down to put the game away at the end, and you couldn't do it. But I'm not going to be screaming that from the rooftops. I'll be whispering it in the basement. But what I want to know is feeling better about Baker after this game. Where are you guys at? Are you pretty confident that he is – absolutely the guy in terms of going forward this season the shoulder injury is not going to be a major factor or are you somehow in the camp of no I'm still looking for nitpicky things against Baker why for yes and for no on offense this Browns offense was not powered by OBJ through the year there were some new players new faces making their way to the front of the podium all right this week How about David and Joku former first round pick 149 yards, one touchdown. DPJ was the training camp MVP, the all-star of the preseason for the Browns. Quiet-ish start to start the season. Not quiet today. Five receptions and 70 yards. And then Rashard Higgins goes for an early score, ultimately slowed down after that. But still, OBJ had a quiet day. Of course, still no Jarvis Landry. So you got some new faces stepping up here. Loved what I saw out of Njoku. This looked like more than just a one-off game. It looked like he's starting to put something together. Probably a little too late. First-round pick back in 2017, but we'll take it at this point. So, who was the MVP on offense today? The obvious answer, I think, is Nick Chubb, but I do love unique answers. I could see Njoku creeping into the comments more than once. You can mention Kareem Hunt. He had two touchdowns. Probably outside of those three guys are Baker Mayfield. You're most likely a relative or a big-time fan of anyone else because Nick Chubb was just a destroyer. He was a bowling ball, but like a skinny bowling ball, like the kind of guy that uses the six-pound ball. He's still agile, but he can knock things over, and that's why him and Kareem Hunt form the best running back duo in the NFL, and you saw it this week once again. Check out the numbers here at Week 5 Stats. These two going together for, what, nearly 200 yards of total offense? It was just unbelievable what Nick Chubb was able to do. Again, a lot of people may have said Kareem Hunt is emerging as the top back in Cleveland. Chubb, he, not just, he, he didn't just silence those guys. He stepped on their throats en route to a 52-yard touchdown run early in this one. Even had a reception. That's not a usual day for Nick Chubb, but he can get involved in the passing game combining for three touchdowns. So a great game once again for Chunt and these two continuing to dominate the entire NFL. Browns fans, usually I have a fun gimmick to try and get some more subs to grow the channel, but there's nothing fun about a 47-42 to 42 loss. But this is one of those games where you just got to take your medicine, watch the film, and get better from it. Because honestly, as this game was unfolding down the stretch here, kind of reminded me of that Bills Cardinals game of uh, last year on the Hail Mary and look where the Bills went after that loss just gonna put that out there just a little positivity right now after a heartbreaking loss so if you want to send uh, some positivity back go ahead and subscribe right now to the Browns report unfortunately we do have some injury news here Denzel Ward he went down with the neck injury did not return and in his place it wasn't pretty 
Uh, I think this is absolutely a factor as to why the Browns are coming out of this game three and two and not four and one. All right, AJ Green, not the guy. I, I that not not the guy this week. That's for sure. All right, still no Greg Newsome. So you missed CB one and CB two for pretty much the in, most of this game. Troy Hill and Greedy Williams tried. Okay, I'll say that much. And AJ Green, number thirty-eight. He was just lost out there. It, it, he needs a full week of practice because I don't know what the severity of this Denzel Ward injury is at this moment. Checking over Twitter, looking for an update in Stefanski's press conference. Haven't seen one just yet. But what I want to know, though, is what is your concern level if Ward misses serious time here? If he's going to be out more, if he's going to go on short-term IR, right? If he's going to miss three weeks, scale for me, one to ten. After today, how are you not starting at a three or a four? I, I do believe with a full week of practice, the backups, AJ Green and Stewart, can do well, but they did not do well answering the call today. They were getting burned all over the place, and it wasn't just them. The whole secondary had a bad day top to bottom, but where are you guys at? Let me know down in the comment section.